Welcome to episode number six of my Kazuha Fan Art series. Uh, I have some news to tell you. Um, I got the results back for the contest, and uh, so I, unfortunately mine didn't make it. There were 19 winners, and not one of them's mine. <laughs> I will say that the person who got first place is actually really good. The artist drew like four or five characters in there, whereas this drawing I'm doing right here, it's only got one character in it, so I think that's probably why. Also, their background's actually quite good as well. I had a look at second and third places as well, and fourth places technically, and it's where um, theirs were actually quite good as well. A lot of them consisted of uh, autumn trees in their backgrounds because Kazoo has like an autumn sort of person. <laughs> But yeah, so I am still pretty disheartened that I didn't actually uh, win anything. And by the way, you're probably thinking, why are you still doing the series then? Because I already recorded it all, so what you're seeing is what I've actually drawn from like a few weeks back. So the commentary is like present, whereas the drawing is like from weeks back basically. <laughs> I definitely did not have time to be able to add any more characters to this. But if I did have time, I definitely would have added Goro to it since he's one of Kazuha's best friends, basically. I would have loved to put Captain Beto in there as well, since if you look carefully, there's definitely enough space to add more characters in. But uh, it got to like one or two days before the deadline was up and I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to do any more. So yeah, that was it. It's because my life is just too busy, outside of YouTube especially. <laughs> <laughs> That's why! You can clearly see that the person who won first and second place and so on, I'll put a link in the description anyway, you can see that they had so much time, especially the person who got first place, they had like four or five characters in it. So I was like thinking, yeah, if I tried to put four or five characters in mine, that would have took like at least 20 hours, instead of it being like four to six hours, because uh, I've made like a plain background. But yeah, you know, there's a very underrated game called Potful Mail. I've never owned the game, but people were telling me, oh, there's a really good RPG platformer game called Potful Mail. You should definitely check it out. And so uh, I did check a few videos out on it, and I was surprised that the Sega CD version of it is actually fantastic. Uh, basically, it's a 1995 game, and there's this heroine called Mail. And you play as her for like the first chunk of the game and you get two more characters in her crew but I think it's where you can switch between characters because it's a platformer and it's where in the Sega CD version it's where there's very good voice acting in it and it's also got FMV cutscenes in it as well and I was like whoa this was made in 1995 there was a SNES version but obviously the SNES version doesn't have those FMVs in it so it's like Mega Man X3 how in the Sega CD version of Mega Man X3, there's like FMV cutscenes in it, like a lot of them. <laughs> so it's like that. It's like, don't underestimate the power of Sega CD. It was very powerful for 993 to 995. It's too bad that not enough people actually supported it. Apparently, it was because the Sega CD was not marketed very well, and also it was very expensive to make games on it and the console itself was actually pretty expensive as well, so that's why. Now the surprising thing about Potful Mail is that I checked if it was on Steam or any other uh, modern day console, and no, it's not on Steam unfortunately, so I have no way of being able to play this game at all. The most surprising thing about Potful Mail is that they had to put funny parts in it, and then Mail's eyes like pop out <laughs> whenever she's in trouble, it's really funny. <laughs> but yeah, there's like this opening FMV as where she's like taking down a lot of enemies and she even makes fun of them and says, Take this, cookie face, and like slashes like three or four of them down. And she's like really cool for like five seconds and then a lot more of them just appears and just like, oh no. <laughs> I heard that the girl who does male's voice became an English teacher later on in life. And someone commented saying, oh, she was my English teacher when I was a lot younger, aka they were a student. And apparently the teacher was not very nice to him. <laughs> I was like, what? 
So they went from voice acting to being a strict teacher? How does that even make sense? There's another game called Mamoru Kun Curse. It's like a shooter game and you can move up, down, left, right, so it's like top down sort of viewpoints. It reminds me of another game called Pocky and Rocky, right? And it's where Mamoru Kun Curse was like on PlayStation 1, but it got re released on Xbox, I think. And it's where I did check if that game's on Steam and it's not. I was actually surprised by that. I was like, it looks like a game that would definitely be on Steam, even for like £10 or something. I don't understand why these games can't be ported to other systems. It's just like a lot of people are like missing out on underrated games out there. Oh, yeah, there's this uh, two player game I used to play with a lot of people, including my siblings and friends a long time ago, and it's called Top Gear 2. And it was the SNES version. There's a Sega Genesis version, also known as a Sega Mega Drive, but you know, and it's where there was a Mega Drive version of it as well. And it's where I had so many fun times with Top Gear 2. It's actually a pretty underrated game, and I'm actually very sad that there's been no re release of it. It's a video game, a racing game, obviously, and it's uh, developed by a company called Gremlin Interactive, but I I think Gremlin Interactive has closed down now, so because I've not heard them make any games recently. And it's like it's just so funny as Top Gear 2. Some of the music is really memorable. Because... And there's also now it's like it gets stuff in your head after a while because you hear the, those two songs quite often in the game. And it's like, I remember doing two player and it's like someone's like in the distance, right? Well, two cars in the distance. And it's like I was like, going, oh, I hate those two. Over there. Oh. <laughs> and it's like, and one of them was actually a friend that was in the distance because it was two player. It's just like, you know, and it's just like. <laughs> Someone was very mean and said well, a similar situation is where it's like, oh, those two over there are breeding. It's like, <laughs> that was my friend. <laughs> like, oops, sorry. <laughs> and it's just like, get out of my way, sort of thing. It's like, oh, wait, it's you. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, this game can cause a lot of fallouts pretty easily. And it's like, I remember one time I was like first place, and it's like someone else that was two player was like fourth place. And it was like, wait for me, wait for me. He's like, I can't. If I wait, I'll get down to like 10th place sort of thing. So it's like, you know. Oh, and the funny thing about Top Gear 2 is that you can actually purchase new parts. So it's like you get wet tires, dry tires, better nitro so that you can go faster, better engine. I used to say it's engine, but it's actually engine. And that sort of thing. You can recolor your car, obviously, and things like that. I was surprised that in the game, you can recolor your car for free, whereas in reality, if you want to recolor your car in the UK, it costs like £520. So it's like, you know, it's like £520 is a lot of money in reality. You don't want to do that. <laughs> There's a lot more things you can buy for £520, so, you know. But anyway, it's a Top Gear 2 fantastic game. I really wish it could be on Steam, but obviously it won't be since the company's gone bankrupt. And I heard there's another game series called Gran Turismo that sold a lot of units. It's like 100 million units in total also there, I can't remember. But like, you know, I, I also like Top Gear 2 because it's where the driver in the car that you're playing as says things like, move over and let her rip when you speed up with one of the nitros and roadhog when you get hit by a car. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, you know, it's just like, it's supposed to be a quite funny game as well. <laughs> it's like, you know. There is Top Gear 1 as well, but I'll be honest, I've played Top Gear 1 before. It's nowhere near as good as Top Gear 2 is by yards out. It's also much harder. But the thing that was interesting about Top Gear 1 compared to Top Gear 2 is that you have to go to like the pit stop and fill up your car. Whereas you don't have to do that in Top Gear 2. You have just enough fuel in Top Gear 2 to get through the whole uh, racing track, whereas in the first one, you actually need to fill up. But the problem is that, if you fill up, you go from like 3rd place to like 20th place, so you have to overtake all the other drivers again <laughs> before the uh, course is finished. And it's just like, you know, it's like, oh no. <laughs> I don't think there's a Top Gear 3 as far as I know. I think this is as far as it goes. 
I don't think there's a sequel to this game in any way after Top Gear 2, but I'll have to put some text on screen if there is, but you know, but yeah. Oh yeah, there's another underrated game and it's called UN Squadron. Um, this is a Capcom game by the way, and it's one of the best Capcom games out there. And it's where, I remember playing it on SNES with a bunch of friends. It's a one player game and it's a horizontal shooter and it's like, it's really good, right? And the music is fantastic. The composer for UN Squadron is the same lady who made the music to classic Mega Man games, most classic Mega Man games. And it's where UN Squadron has a lot of replay value. And this is like a 1991 game as well. <laughs> there is an arcade version of it, which is two players, but obviously you can't buy the arcade version. You can only buy the SNES cartridge version. And the sad thing is that it's not on Steam. <laughs> There's so many Capcom games out there which are on Steam, but one of them is not UN Squadron. And it's where there's even an anime that's in English voices and Japanese voices. You know, the Japanese dub and the English dub. I've actually watched the anime before, but not all of it. And it's where there's basically three main characters, which is Shin, Mickey, and Greg. And uh, there's other characters involved as well. And it's where the game is actually fantastic. <laughs> it's been designed pretty well as well. The only downside to the game I can see is that you cannot save it in any way you have to start and finish the game all in one sitting so you know and the game's about 90 minutes long per run so it's like you know and it's where there's easy normal hard and i did not know this until recently but there's another difficulty mode called gamer mode it's basically expert mode and it's where enemies move really fast and Basically, you really have to learn how to dodge attacks a lot <laughs> for that one. And the ending's slightly different. In the ending to Expert Mode, it's where it's just a line of soldiers walking by and they, and they say, you are crazy. But you get the normal ending as you usually would. Then it plays that at the end if you've done it on Expert Mode. But yeah, and it's where one of the interesting things about UN Squadron is that you need to save up money as you win against bosses and stages and such and you can buy new planes new fighter planes even and you can also buy special weapons a lot of the special weapons in UN Squadron reminds me of Mega Man X special weapons but there you go well it's the same people who made up Mega Man so that's why <laughs> at least in UN Squadron you actually have a health bar Whereas in another game called Gradius, which is a Konami game, you only have one hit and you die. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely like You Went Squadron much more. I really wish it was on Steam or re-release in some way, but Capcom just won't re-release it for some reason. I don't know why. There is a spiritual successor to You Went Squadron. Well, it's sort of a sequel to You Went Squadron. It's called Carrier Airwing. It's another video game, right? But I've never played this one and it's definitely based off UN Squadron but the problem with Carrier Airwing is that it did not sell very well at all also it was only on um, arcade machines uh, you know so Capcom probably thought oh no this game is not getting very much money for us so that's probably why they just pretty much stopped the UN Squadron series as a whole <laughs> so I think that's why they've not made another UN Squadron for so long but you know Thank you for watching the video. If you want to actually show your support, you may tick like, share, or subscribe to my channel. You can even do all three of them if you want to. So yeah, and with that, I'll end up the video. So thanks you for watching.